What's up, Adding Bolt fans? This is Nick, and today I'm going to show you how to generate a CSR from a Windows machine. So a lot of times if you need a certificate, there's an option to do it within an appliance um, or from CLI, and I find it easier just to go ahead and do it from within the Windows operating system. So it's actually a pretty quick process, uh, pretty easy to do. So all you want to do is just go ahead and open up the certificate MMC so you can get there by going start run cert lm.msc um, go ahead and enter that and then you'll see that it pulls up the certificate local computer there is a uh, little bit longer way to go about getting there if you want to see that as well so if you start run and do MMC instead um, what you'll do is you'll get the console here where you can add and remove snap-ins so if you do add remove snap-ins go to certificates go add and then go to computer account click next local computer and then finally okay it'll end up bringing you to the exact same spot so i prefer just using the short method but now you know both ways once you're here all you got to do is go ahead and right click on the personal go to all tasks go down to advanced operations and create custom request Go ahead and click next we're going to proceed without an enrollment policy from here uh, you can google the differences between these but i usually just use legacy key because you can use the dot key extension so go ahead and select legacy key go ahead and click next we're going to click the drop down here next to details and click properties and this is where we're going to be able to specify the um well, the different properties <laughs> for the CSR. So friendly name, this is what it's gonna look like within, um, a lot of times when you import the certificate into IIS, I like to pick a friendly name that's easy to pick out. Um, so this stands out different from the common name. So usually what I'll do is whatever year that I'm redoing the cert for, it'll be my cert and then 2025 or 2024, whatever year that we're in. Um, go ahead and click on apply. I like to click apply as I move through each one of these tabs because what I've found in some instances, not all the time, but sometimes if you wait until you get to the end and click apply, it doesn't retain the settings. So I've just gotten into a habit of clicking apply every single time, every time I move from each one of these screens or I'm finished in it. Um, this is kind of the meat of the certificate here. Um, typically, your organization is going to specify what portions of these you need to actually specify. Um, for instance, where I work, we specify the country, the locality, um, organization, state, and common name. Common name is going to be the main certificate name, so whatever the users are typing into their browser, if this is like a web cert. So, for instance, my cert cert.local.com for your if that was your domain as an example so we'll go ahead and just call this my net doesn't really matter this is just an example um, what you're going to want to do though is whatever you specify for common name you're going to also want to specify that as the D, as a dns entry or a san attribute uh, subject alternative name otherwise browsers such as chrome won't um, they'll give uh, give errors when users are visiting your website so go ahead and just specify the same thing down here this would also be if you have multiple dns um, or FQDNs that users can hit your site at, you would specify the multiple ones down here. So for instance, if they could also go to mycert2.local.net, you'd want to go ahead and put that down there. Now you can add, tip. I, I forget the exact number, but there are multiple, you can add multiple entries down here, but depending on who, um, what vendor you sign your certificate with, you may need to pay additional for additional SAN entries. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, up here, we'll just do country, U.S., um, locality. This would be like the um, the city that you're in. Um, we'll just pick something. Organization, my company, and then state. Oops. Once you got all that filled out, just go ahead and click on apply. Over on extensions, typically for web certs, what, what we're selecting here is server authentication. Go ahead and click apply. And then lastly, for key options, you usually make that at least 248, make the private key exportable. So then once you, so once this uh, certificate is generated from the, um, 
from your third party vendor, most like uh, in trust or whatever. Um, you can import the certificate back into the system that you created the CSR on, and then you'll be able to export the private key as well. And then under key type, go ahead and make that exchange typically and that is all you need and I like to click through just in case I forgot to click apply I like to click through each one of these screens make sure that everything has been retained go ahead and click OK and we're going to go ahead and select next and then we'll just save off this uh, save off the CSR <laughs> in one of my gaming folders um, my CSR there we go Save that as base 64. Then once you've saved that off, all you got to do is uh, again go out to wherever you're going to, whichever vendor you're going to have sign this certificate, um, and then you'll upload that CSR to them. And usually you just copy and paste it. So let me see if I can find where I saved that at here. And I'll just show you real quick what it looks like. There we go. So there's my CSR. Typically, what I'll do is I'll just click in there, hit delete one, so I got no extra characters. We'll just get Control A to select the entire certificate, Control C to copy it, and then that's what I would paste into, for example, in Trust. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop it down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.